One year ago, U.S. Secretary of State John Kelly, President Tanzania, has caught a model in the region for good governance, democratic ideals, and individual freedoms. But my colleague Paul Sisko reports that's no longer the case. Waiting. Tanzania's president, Jakaya Kikwete, respecting constitutional limits, left office at the completion of his second term last year. For the first time, a united opposition put forth a single candidate, former Prime Minister Edward Lawasa for president of Tanzania, against the long-standing Chama Cha Mapinduzi party candidate, John Magafuli. It was the first true challenge to CCM that has led the East African nation since 1964. Saif Sharif Ahmad, opposition candidate for president of Zanzibar and former first vice president, spoke at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington Monday. In Zanzibar, along with the rest of Tanzania, people voted in good faith in elections, especially in Zanzibar, that were held as free and fair. Local and international election observers reported no significant problems with the peaceful vote in Tanzania or Zanzibar. Not so with the announced results and annulment of the Zanzibar vote by the Zanzibar Electoral Commission. President Magafuli won the close presidential vote. The opposition disputed the count and the annulment, denying civic united front candidate Saif Sharif Hamad a victory in Zanzibar. The chairman of the Zanzibar Electoral Commission, Jecha Salim Jecha, an appointee of the ruling party, annulled the entire exercise. According to the constitution of Zanzibar and the electoral law of Zanzibar, the chairman of the commission has no such powers. Even the commission has no such powers. That was an act which was against the Constitution, against the law. The same election observers agreed. The opposition boycotted the election rerun in March, and the ZEC announced a landslide victory for CCM candidate, the incumbent president, Dr. Ali Mohammed Sheen. In response, the U.S. Millennium Challenge Corporation has suspended $472 million in development aid to Tanzania. Ambassador Mark Green says U.S. assistance is based on reforms that create the conditions for economic growth. What is it that, that the U.S. and the U.S. commercial sector believe is key for a prosperous future? Well, citizen-centered government, citizen-responsored government is at the heart of that. We believe that there must be genuinely elections in a system which reflect the will of the people. Mr. Hamad warns Zanzibar is in danger of falling prey to violent extremism. Poor economic governance, poverty and unemployment, especially among the youth, and a biding sense of desperation and injustice. And all of this with no channels for political expression. That is why we refuse to ext extinguish hope and that is why our struggle for democracy is about much more than Zanzibar. Thank you very much indeed. Mr. Hamad acknowledged America's long-standing friendship with Tanzania and Zanzibar. He praised America's consistent support for human rights, good governance, and democracy in the region. But he said he fears the erosion of those ideals in Tanzania and his island nation. Paul Sisko, VOA News.